Welcome to Enlightenment of Change with Connie Whitman of Whitman & Associates. Here's Connie. Hi, I'm Connie Whitman, your host, and you're listening to Enlightenment of Change on webtalkradio.net. Thanks so much for joining us this week. So my quote today, or my inspiring quote today, is by Chris Grosser, and, and he says, Opportunities don't happen, you create them. So now, do you know people who seem to have all the luck as it relates to their job? You know the people who are always chosen for special projects or seem to miraculously get a new job opportunity just out of the blue. Now, do you feel like opportunities never come knocking at your door? And have you ever wondered why opportunities have not knocked recently or why maybe you feel stuck in your position? Maybe it's time we look in the mirror and see what we could do differently to create better hiring practices to get the right candidates to come to our organizations. Well, today you're in store for a tremendous treat. My guest for the second time is back. It's Mac Pritchard. And Mac is the founder and publisher of Mac's List, an online platform that connects talented professionals with meaningful local work opportunities. He was founded in Portland, Oregon back in 2001, so Max has been doing this for a while. Max List serves job seekers and employers with a job board as well as courses, books, events, and other resources that bring people together to find better jobs and, of course, happier careers. Mac built two small businesses on the strength of his professional network, which is very important, and he has taught thousands of people how to grow their careers through relationships with others. Now, Mac shows job seekers and employers how to break down the barriers between them by teaching preparation, empathy, and people-focused hiring practices with a practical nuts and bolts style that's accessible for everyone. Now, Mac believes in the power of business as a force for good. I love that. And he is also the author of Land Your Dream Job Anywhere. Um, and host a weekly career advice podcast, Find Your Dream Job, Something You Should Look At. And Mac is a graduate of the University of Iowa and Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government. Woo! So with that, uh, just enormous background and wealth of information, please help help me welcome Mac to the show. So Mac, thanks for being on. Well, thanks for having me, Connie. It's a pleasure to come back. It's always a pleasure having you. We had such a great conversation last time. And I just think, Mac, that both employers looking at their hiring practices, you know, three months later, they look at an employee and say, I didn't know this is what we were getting, right? And on the flip side, I don't always know that employees know how to um, be authentic enough to get the job that they should have versus what they you know, what they're trying for just to get a paycheck, right? Because sometimes that's what we do. And we see that a lot at Max List. And we, as you mentioned, run a job board, Connie. So I talk to job seekers and employers all the time. We publish about 500 job listings a month. That's great. Largely in the Pacific Northwest. But the, the issues that our customers bring to us are, are universal. And what we hear from a lot of employers is they uh, they do get frustrated with the candidates they get. And, you know, I, and I say this respectfully, I encourage them to think about how they're doing hiring because uh, if you do it thoughtfully you're, and strategically, you're going to get much better results for a number of reasons, and I know we're going to get into them. Um, many employers uh, don't invest the time and the, and the care they should yeah. into hiring, and that causes uh, – uh, pain for both parties down the road often. Yeah, time and money's wasted too, which is you know crazy because that's two commodities that we don't ever want to waste, right? So first, I want to talk about networking from the individual, the power of using your network to help create those opportunities. If I am seeking mm-hmm. a job, so let's talk about that, and then I want to talk about the employer end and how that could be leveraged as well. So briefly, individuals, yeah. why is that network and leveraging it just so important? Because most jobs, Connie, never make it onto any job board. Mm-hmm. And there are estimates out there that as many as eight out of 10 positions uh, are never advertised. They're filled by word of mouth. And let's say the that estimate is too high. Maybe it's five or six out of 10 jobs that never get advertised. Here's the most people I see, though, make a mistake. They spend 100 percent of their time looking at postings on job boards like mine, and they really need to step away from the computer. Otherwise, they may only be seeing 
20, 30 percent of the positions out there. And those unadvertised jobs and the only way to find out about them is through networking may be it may include their dream job. And, you know, you hear it all the time. Somebody leaves a company, their choice. And all of a sudden right. they're at this other, and you think, had that happened? And oftentimes the other company will reach out, you no, know, through a network or whatever the situation is, and kind of say, hey, why don't you come work for me? One of my favorite stories, I have a friend, he's a CFO at a boutique insurance company now, but he started working as an audio guy, you know, like they would inc- input the audio system into your car, you know, this really yeah. high end stuff. And this one sure. gentleman came in, he did it in his car, then he did it in his house, and he owned the this insurance company and he really liked Spencer. So one day, year of, of getting to know Spencer and just a thoughtful, nice guy. He was a kid at the time. He said, why don't you come work for me? I think I could teach you some things. I like your work ethic. I like how you engage the client. Um, you're very organized. You think you're, you're strategic in your thinking. So saw so all these qualities right in this kid. And now fast forward, he's a CFO of an insurance, you know, this boutique insurance company. And he said, who, like, after college, this is what he was doing. Who would have thought? So you just never know. Behind the computer, we don't always get, you, like you said, at 20, 30% of the job. So being FaceTime with people is important. Now let's flip that. So I'm looking to hire. How can the network or my network help me with that? How do I leverage that? You need to think about it right from the start when you're planning to fill the position. And here's often what happens, Connie. A lot of employers will put together a, a job posting and for a number of good reasons, they're short of time, they're not quite sure what they want. They put something out that really doesn't accurately reflect uh, the position's responsibilities or or include a salary range. The other thing that they do as kind of an afterthought is they take that posting and they might email it out to a few colleagues or share it with uh, people inside their company. But they don't invest a lot of time and they don't think about the strategy. And here's why you want to do both things well. In the end, when those resumes come in, and I I encourage you to reflect on this and your listeners as well, uh, you're going through them. You've got 50, 100 uh, applications. You've got to get that piled down to five or ten that you're going to invite for an interview. So you you look for people who have the qualifications um, and Almost always someone will say, oh, hey, I know that person. Or if you get a phone call, uh, you will pull on behalf of someone, you'll pull that resume out. And what's happening here is a principle that's really important in hiring. It's we hire, we tend to turn to people we've worked with mm. or who are recommended to us by people we trust. So that's uh, if there's a weak tie even uh, just a phone call on behalf of someone it may be enough to get not only the hiring manager to look at that resume but to it, that in turn might lead to an invitation for an interview what i would say to hiring managers is don't make that an afterthought if if recognize that your network matters you're going to give more consideration to candidates who are sent to you by people you trust so invest time and effort when you have that uh, posting ready to go in reaching out to trusted colleagues, the leaders uh, in your industry and others who will know of great people and will bring you good recommendations. But don't make it an afterthought. Yeah, and it's interesting. I have, um, you know, my kids are, my one is graduating from college, but kids are in college, so their peers are in college, and they're looking for internships, right? So a lot of my clients will say, we're looking for good interns or some I, I, locale, right? You know, these kids could commute. It's a commutable uh, distance. And I'll reach out to the director of the HR department and I'll say, listen, I have this kid, a good kid. He's looking for an internship. Send me the resume. And inevitably, every time I've recommended the child gets, the, you know, the, the young man or young woman gets the internship. Here's the reason why. Because the HR directors know if I'm sending them your way, if they don't perform, they'll have me to answer to, right? Because it's my reputation that I'm putting on the line to recommend for this internship. And ironically, they, these kids have the internships and then they ultimately get hired. because, And that has nothing to do with me. They get in, right, on these internships. They prove themselves and then the company ultimately hires them. So networking really is so important, especially if you're trusted 
um, you know, if I trust you or you trust me and I do send someone, you know that's my reputation on the line that I'm not just going to haphazardly uh, send a weak candidate your way. So networking is really important, right? It is. And hiring managers, again, who invest the time to get the word out in a, in a strategic way are going to get a lot more yeah. good recommendations like that. Too often I see with employers, they think that their hire, their outreach is done once they've posted their position on a couple of job boards. And then they sit back and they wait for the applications to come in. And then often they're unhappy with the quality of applications that they've received. And uh, when that happens, sometimes they'll they'll start to pick up the phone or, or send out an email and, and try to reach uh, to generate some word of mouth. My the employers I see who get the best results with hiring are the ones who think about that outreach right from the start yeah. and they build it into their hiring process. Yeah, and I bet you hear this all the time. I know I hear it from my clients. No one applied or no one that has the credential is applying. Right. I don't know what, like what's out there. Is it what's out there or is it how you're setting up the position that you're just getting the wrong people to apply? Often the problem is with the position description itself, Connie. Yeah. People uh, don't start by thinking about the problems they're asking this person to solve once they start the job. And why that's important is it always comes up at the end of the uh, process when you try to se select a finalist. So you want to start with your needs. And I know that sounds very basic, but a lot of the position descriptions we see on our job board they reflect a kind of wish list or employers just aren't certain exactly what they want. So they're going to use the hiring process as a sort of discovery or research project. And I would encourage them to be really crystal clear about what you want this person to do and then describe it in real plain language. So many position descriptions are bureaucratic. They're hard to read. It's not clear what the employer wants. So you're not attracting the candidates you hope to get. I would also add, it's really important to include a salary range. There's research out there that shows that as many as 65 or 70 percent of uh, people who are looking for work are much more likely to apply for a position if you include a salary range. It also saves you time and effort in the process because if you put depend on experience, you may hear from people who are way overqualified for the position and you've invested time in looking at their application and perhaps inviting them in for one or even uh, two interviews before this topic of money comes up. And and it's true, right? And I might I might not apply thinking they didn't put a salary. It means they're probably not paying very much or they're yeah. probably paying more than I'm going to even get offered. So we sometimes we could perceive it the ups absolutely the wrong way. What about um LinkedIn? Are you seeing a lot of activity now with your clients where they're because we're talking about networking, but LinkedIn is becoming even more and more refined in what link with the LinkedIn platform is doing. Are you seeing that as a little bit of a shift with employers? I do see employers turning to LinkedIn and other on online platforms to find candidates. And LinkedIn makes it very easy for you to do that. Obviously, yeah. you can search by, by keywords and, and, uh, and then those searches by geographic areas or particular industries. And of course, LinkedIn has its own job board and it, it's a great uh, service and, and people often will take advantage of that. We do find that Employers will often work with two or three job boards, not only ours, but obviously a, a national or or an industry specific site as well. Um, your online employees do pay attention to what candidates say about themselves online, and I think that's important. And it's also something every job seeker needs to pay attention to. They always should be aware of their digital footprint and, and remember that. Um, more than 90% of recruiters say in, in surveys that they Google candidates before they invite them in for interviews. So what you say about yourself matters, and you've got to pay attention to it. And it's important that we brand ourselves properly. And, you know, I know the the uh, younger generation that's coming up now, and by, what is it, 2020, I think they're going to be 70% of the population. So, and and it's true because I, I know my the executives that I deal with, and they say, 
you know, with my kids and their kids growing up with some, you know, peers. And we say, talk to our kids about their digital footprint. You know, they think, oh, nobody's going to see it. People are going to Google you. And it, it could be the difference between you getting a job and not getting a job. So they really have, we all have to be mindful of what we, certainly what we post and what we put out there. And, and yeah. you know, if like LinkedIn isn't really a personal platform. So you really want to keep it in the utmost of, of the professional kind of right. branding. So we don't we don't think about that. We think, oh, we're having fun and we're going to post a selfie, whatever. Um, we have to be mindful. Even, you know, peers like us, we need to be yeah. mindful of what we're posting because it it's a reflection of, you know, who we are and, and again, who my recommendations might be, etc. What is what do you find if if the if the companies make these changes, what do you see as the biggest um, gain for them? I, I, I pain point Right. Yes, we respond because we have a pain point. We need to hire. You should make these changes. But on the on the flip side, the companies that have made these changes based on your recommendations kind of think strategically, do this up front. On the back end, what what do you see as the real value added? They get better applications from the right people. And I also want to touch back on your point, Connie, about branding. Candidates need to pay attention to their online brands. So do companies. Because yeah. right now, while we're, we're recording this, we're experiencing record uh, uh, a record low unemployment rate in the United States. So there are more jobs than there are candidates out there. And uh, employers are struggling with not only getting ap- uh, the right applications, but in some cases getting a, a good number of applications. Mm. You got it's, it's it's always important to pay attention to your brand as an employer, but especially in a market like that, like this. And that means that you've got to look at your website, um, talk about your mission. Employee job seekers now are looking for companies that are uh, have interesting cultures, uh, are offering opportunities for growth and advancement. And they want to know what it's like to work inside uh, an organization and uh, how it's going to help their career. And the, the, the companies that I see that are most effective at hiring uh, make sure that their company website uh, addresses those concerns and they pay attention to that brand. And there's a lot of platforms out there, Mac, that you can, like in college, it's rate your professor. On yeah. Google, you can, you can Google that person and see if there's any bad press, you know, from from uh, previous employees and stuff like that. So again, our branding, but our company's branding is equally important because we do want to attract the right people. And if if this, you know, with with our job market now in the employee's favor, not no longer the employer's favor. Because years ago, I can remember saying, do le- do more with less. Like, where are you gonna mm-hmm. go? There's no jobs. Now that, that tide has turned, and now you're good employees. If you, we don't treat them properly, and they're good at networking, and they're good at branding themselves, they're gonna be picked from headhunters and whoever, or through their network to say, you need to come work for me. I could do a much better job for your career than what you're getting at the current company. So we really have to be mindful of all these moving parts that we never had to before social media, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah, and to your point, think about it. When we're going out for a meal, we'll check out a restaurant on Yelp, or we'll look at other online Absolutely. reviews for all kinds of experiences, hotels, Airbnbs. Job seekers do the same thing with employers. Uh, they And there are online review sites where former or current employees will write about their experiences inside that company. So employers who are good at hiring pay attention to those reviews. They pay attention to their company culture, and they understand that the experiences that people have inside their firm are going to eventually end up online. They're also aware when they're designing their hiring process, Connie, that it, you know, not if you have 100 people apply for a job, obviously only one person is going to the position, but the other 99 are going to have an experience, and smart employers pay attention to that experience. So they do things that sound so simple, but uh, many employers still don't do or don't do well. And I'm talking about things like acknowledging an application, uh, letting people know when they apply what the next steps are in the process. Uh, when people are invited in for interviews, letting them know, getting back to people who uh, aren't advancing in the process, letting those who are, are still in being interviewed 
know what the the milestones are and they run a timely they, they don't drag out the hiring process over six twelve ten weeks um, and uh, because when you're a candidate for a job you're having experience with that company's brand and if you uh, and you want to make sure that candidates have a positive experience because they're going to talk about it either with their friends or online or probably both and I think there's a danger in that if and and how many times I know you hear this all the time I'm sure just because of of what you do but I hear all the time I applied for the job and then you don't hear anything it like goes into the right. abyss so you know you move on or they the hiring process takes so long that now they're interviewing for other positions so now they get right. offered a position they take it and meanwhile the other companies because they're later in the process all of a sudden now they get the better offer six months later where whoever they interviewed took that much longer or whatever now they come back and they pull you because the other opportunity actually is a better one so it, it's not smart to take too long as well as I'm, I'm sure not making a haphazard decision by you know putting the process on speed so that you make the wrong decision out of the gate it's it, there's got to be a little bit of finesse in it I would think right and that what how that process rolls out uh, and I, I think smart employers think about how they want to be treated if they're an app, a candidate for a job. Sure. They have empathy. And and then that empathy informs their hiring process. So, Connie, I, there really is no excuse for not acknowledging a job application. Uh, we have the technology. It's never been easier. Even a simple uh, uh, mail merge note that uh, just addresses someone by their first name and says, thanks for your application. We've decided to move on. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't take that long to do. It's not that hard, but it's shocking to me uh, how often uh, applicants don't get those notes. And I'm even more shocked uh, by employers who invite people in for interviews and uh, decide to move on with other candidates yeah. and and uh, and don't uh, take the time to call or even send a simple email saying thanks for investing your time in our our process. You're, uh, we've decided to to talk to other folks. These are basic things, but uh, they, by creating a positive experience for the candidate, you're not only it's not only the right thing to do; it's also good for your your company and reputation. And as you know, uh, we in our if we as when we stay in a field, we keep running across the same people again and again and again. So Recycled. the people, yeah, and I've certainly had the experience uh, as a manager. Uh, when I was in the workforce before I started my company of being a, uh, interviewing people for a job, telling them no. And then a few years later, I was a candidate and I was interviewing with them. So <laughs> why wouldn't you want to do this? It's in your own self-interest. But uh, it, the bottom line, though, is when you adopt practices like that, you get better candidates and happier employees and it's also good for your company's brand and bottom line. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's true. I, you know, I always say that, oh, we're recycled in whatever the industry is because the industries are getting smaller and smaller, especially yeah. because of the digital uh, platforms that we're, we're, we're able to do Zoom meetings so that we can communicate with colleagues out in California. So everything is shrinking. The other day I went to a new client and I walked in and we were setting up the PowerPoint for me to uh, teach the curriculum that I had created. And this young man walked walks in and they said, oh, Connie, this is, you know, Michael. And I was like, oh, my God, why? I'm like, why do I know you? Because I had never yeah. been with this client before as a new client. And I teach for the New Jersey Bankers Association for one of their programs. And he goes, I was the first class in the emerging leaders. I'm like, oh, my big hug and, and kiss. So yeah. the, the, the executive who was doing the introduction, he goes, you know, everybody. And I giggled and I said, I get around. Right. But we're, <laughs> it, it's just a, our industries are shrinking that yeah. you, we just see each other in different venues. It, so again, your reputation precedes you. And if you were, let's say now, I'm in a higher position than you, and you're the one looking for the job, and now you're interviewing with me, and you didn't create the empathy, you didn't respond to my, um, you know, I didn't get the job or whatever, and you didn't respond to my resume, how, how likely am I going to hire you now? Because the roles yeah. are reversed, right? So it, it, it comes, karma's, karma's, you know, it bites you. <laughs> yeah, no, treat people the way you want to be treated when you're doing hiring. And be as transparent as possible. Uh, if you're inviting people for an interview, if they're going to 
there's going to be a panel. Let the candidates know who the people are in the room. Sure. Uh, because they, that gives them the opportunity to to do a little bit of research and and uh, find out more about the interviewers. And they, there may be common connections. Maybe you went to the same university or you grew up in the same part of the country. Um, and other ways you could be transparent, you know, share questions in advance if you're inviting people in. Uh, don't make the hiring process a mystery. Yeah. Uh, you've got a plan that you're following if you're doing it effectively where you've identified dates by which you want to do interviews, um, by which you want to make an offer and have somebody in place. Share that information uh, because that's going to help the candidates put their best foot forward. And when you hire somebody, uh, chances are you're going to be spending about 2,000 hours a year with them. Why wouldn't you want to invest the time to find the best person possible and allow create a hiring process that allows people to shine and show their best work? And you know what's funny? Uh, you know, do you? Well, let me let me ask it the, the question this way. You said share the questions in advance. Do employers mm-hmm. not do that because then they say, well, the person's going to come in answering the way they know we want it to be answered, so they have too much time to prepare. I'd rather make it like the Spanish Inquisition, so they come in a little <laughs> nervous. What, like, what what's the feedback you get from your clients? Well, I think that we because we work with so many small uh, and medium sized organizations. Uh, uh, hiring is not something many of our companies have a full-time person to do. Uh-huh. So it's something they do in addition to their regular work. And uh, so they might hire once a year or once every two or three years. And they uh, they just don't have a lot of experience doing it. So they um, a lot of the mistakes that, that they make or, or best practices they should be aware of that just haven't had a chance to adopt because that's not their main job. Sure. Uh, I think that certainly there are managers who like to put candidates on edge. I don't think that is the most effective way to find the best people uh, because in the end, I think the companies that are most successful are the ones that build teams and create a, a supportive, trusting environment. And I think the hiring process should reflect that. Yeah, we need to be a kinder world. Isn't that isn't that so true in every aspect of our life? So now with the with the job market really being the employee having the advantage, so to speak, um, what do you tell clients or even bigger organizations? What should be bottom line, tight hiring market, these are the three top main things or five top main things that you really need to do to be able to handpick the, the, the highest uh, or the creme de la creme, right, in all of the folks that you're going to be hiring or all of the folks who are looking for positions? Well, first start by thinking about the job seekers' needs okay. and what's important to them. And culture keeps coming up again and again. When people have a choice of employers, they want to work in a place where that meets their needs, both uh, uh, professionally and personally. So I think you need to share your company culture on your website. You can do that through videos, through text. Uh, You should also think about uh, how you can share that culture in your hiring process. Often, Uh, employers will uh, invite candidates to talk to people at different levels inside an organization. It's not just a a conversation one-on-one with a hiring manager who's going to be supervising them. Uh, Second, uh, and we talked about this, be transparent in your hiring process and and plan it ahead of time. Don't do this on the fly Um, because when you're competing for candidates, uh, you want to your hiring process to be as well organized and as transparent as possible. Uh, And then finally, get the job description right and share the salary information. Um, This is going to not only increase applications at the front end, it's going to make it uh, easier to find the right candidates, the people who have the skills you want. So often, uh, as we touched on at the start of the conversation, The job posting is either a wish list or it's something that's just dashed out. And it's written not with the um, uh, uh, with often internal needs uh, in mind. People use bureaucratic language that uh, is part of their company's culture. And 
uh, and that and that can be confusing to candidates. So write in clear, plain language. It's true, and, and I I know in the banking industry we use our jargon with customers, and they yeah. look like they don't know what you're talking about. I I would imagine it's the same with hiring, right? If we use our jargon, even if you're in the industry, but your company has a different jargon, that that could throw off getting the right candidates. Simple. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, be clear about what you want and and uh and and share that with candidates and you'll get a much better response. What do you do you see a lot now that the job market is um it's harder for the employer to find the right candidate. Do you see a lot more hiring from within and promoting from within and grooming, succession planning, all of that kind of stuff? I see that. And also, there's a lot more networking happening. Uh, and you know, job postings aren't going away. They will always be part of a hiring process. But the, the, the best candidates often come through word of mouth. And in a, a market like this, where there's more competition for candidates, uh, employers are turning to their networks more and more. And the ones who are most effective at finding the people they want, again, do this in a strategic, thoughtful way. It's it's not an afterthought. Yeah. So they have they they make a they they know the industry leaders that they want to reach out to. They look uh, they talk to former employees. Um, some companies will offer referral fees uh, in order to generate word of mouth. Uh, and these these informal networks are, are, are just such a powerful way of finding the best people. Yeah, it's so interesting. And, and here's here's just the reality, the, the, the long and short of, of our whole conversation, you know, over this past half hour. P- prepare. Just be better prepared. Have a plan. Think strategically before it's just this knee jerk. I got to fill a position. Let me go find a warm body. You can't just find warm bodies anymore be- because the, the, if you do that and it's the wrong job and I'm a good employee, meaning I'm, I'm credible, I work hard, I do all the things, I'm a quick learner, I'm going to be moving on quicker then because you're not you're not delivering what I thought I was going to get because there was um, there was so much um, uh, not clear information right out of the gate. It's time wasted. Again, it's this time and money. Strategically think it. Yeah. Have a plan. I don't know. Isn't that life? Shouldn't we be doing that with life? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's I know it's easier said than done. But I know. Again, know what you want and. Don't use the hiring process as a, as a research project. Uh, yeah. Sometimes these postings will, people will have these wish lists and they'll say, it would be great to have this or I think we'd like to have the person do that. Uh, well, let's see what we can get. And I'm not sure how much I can pay, but let's see what people are willing to take. And good candidates, when they're out doing job searches, they research the market. They know what employers pay for their position. Yeah. They know what the career tra- trajectories are and uh, what the skill requirements are for different levels. And employers have to do the same when they're hiring. They've got to be clear about what they want and what they're willing to pay and, and candidly, uh, what their competitors are doing. So if they're going to put together yeah. a competitive market and a uh, 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 offer rather and attract the best people. And here's the thing, you know, my son's graduating uh, college this year, and my husband, we we you know we're talking what he wanted to do, and you know start to help him kind of narrow his his search. And what do you do? You go and you Google different jobs, and what is the for a new new graduate, right? What is that with this degree? You know, finance degree. What are the uh, dollar amounts? So if he goes into an interview and they're they're trying to get him for fifteen thousand less than the industry average, you know, we're we right. as parents are going to say, why would you do that? Why would you give all of your time, your resources, your education, right? That you got this finance degree, you're going to go for your MBA at night, and you're going to accept fifteen thousand dollars less than what the market indicator is. There, the the internet. They so employers, I would think, really need to look at the internet to make sure that they're in their correct ballpark to get the quality of the candidate they want for the dollar amount that they're they're willing to uh, what they can afford because sometimes then you have to lower your standard if you can only afford X then you know you can't buy the Mercedes you know you have to buy the lower <laughs> lower end candidate <laughs> right? but isn't that the truth it is and and almost every employer I talk to has a budget for a position sure. they know how much they want to spend sure. uh, on this person and the best ones uh, have gone out and looked what 
their competitors pay. They've done, they've looked at the salary studies. They know their local market, and and often their bosses ask them to make the case for that salary and, and ask for research okay. uh, to support it. Smart. So, to your point about your son going out and doing that online research. Um, uh, Employers need to recognize that candidates are doing that, and the best employers do that kind of work as well. Uh, they they don't guess, and they don't use the hiring process to figure it out. Yeah, or to try to get someone in cheap. <laughs> it doesn't work, especially yes. in the employee's market. It's just it's not going to work now. It's interesting. It's not. Yeah. You're probably not going to be happy with results, and yeah. if you uh, lowball someone on the salary – if they haven't done the homework, eventually they're going to find out and they're going to go somewhere else. Absolutely. So why – why it's an important investment. You don't want to go cheap. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Strategy. We have to think strategically. It, it is what it is. We're out yeah. of time. So everybody, if you're interested or, you know, Mac, first of all, tremendous amount of research uh, resources that Mac provides. So go to his website, which is maxlist.org. So M-A-C-S-L-I-S-T dot org. If you'd like to connect with Mac directly and ask questions, you can email him at Mac at PritchardCommunications.com. Did I get that right, Mac? You did. And I would add also on our website, we have a lot of resources for employers yes. that you can about hiring, how to write a great job description and, and other useful information. Go to maxlist.org slash employers. Awesome. You know what, Mac, uh, after the show, if you, I'll write that down. I'm not going to write it down now. Um, I will post that on the Web Talk Radio platform so people could just click and find you. So I'll add that as well as the website and the email. Um, thank you again so much for, for just being an, a great guest and so informative. And this is such an important topic because whether you're looking for a job or you're looking for a new hire, if you're not right now, a month from now, you may be because life is changing so quickly. So, again, I think that you're such a wonderful resource um, for anybody out there and the resources you provide on your website. So I, I do hope people go and check out Mac, maxlist.org. Uh, check it out. Again, a wealth of information. Um, if you need me, please reach out to me directly at Connie at WhitmanAssos.com. I do respond to emails directly. So if you need help with coaching or sales or anything leadership related, um, just email me. And if I don't know, I have so many resources that I could send your way. Also, my partner and I are still offering our free communication style assessment. Just go to wisdomdecoded.com and you can take that free assessment, get your little report, helps find, you get a little bit of insight of how you communicate innately, just some of the skills you, you have and how people are perceiving your message. And again, you get a little report with that. Um, all free, so go to wisdomdecoded.com. Mac, thank you again uh, just for being on, and, and it's such an important topic. Last time we spoke about networking and the importance, and this time we talked about good hiring practices. Uh, there's so much in between. <laughs> so again, go to maxlist.org um, as a resource. So thank you so much for taking the time to be on and sharing your wealth of knowledge. Well, thank you, Connie. It's been a pleasure. I really enjoyed our conversation. It, it's always a pleasure, Max, seeing you. Thanks again. And I hope you guys will join us weekly as we question, build, and discover together that change, no matter where it comes from in your life, um, change is easier to navigate than you often think. And I hope some of the shows and the tools and the guests that I, I uh, bring to the show provide some insight as to how to na navigate sometimes those turbulent waters. Um, thank you all again, and thank you, Mac, for joining us today. You've been listening to Enlightenment of Change with me, your host, Connie Whitman, on webtalkradio.net. I wish you all a wonderful and empowering, inspired week. Thanks, everyone. You've been listening to Enlightenment of Change with Connie Whitman of Whitman & Associates. To learn more about Connie, visit her website, whitmanassoc.com. Thank you for tuning in. We're glad you were here. <laughs>